This is chapter 7 of Ella Enchanted, a book that is written by a person. And that person's name is Gail Carson Levine. This is, as I've previously said, chapter 7. Here it goes. Where are you going? Char cried. He could see where I was going. I must, I said. Stop, I command you to stop. I stopped and stood shaking. Well, soldiers crowded around the hut. Their swords pointed at the ogre, who glared at me, then turned his back and retreated into the dim interior. Why did you listen to him? Char asked. I was still having trouble with the child. He was pulling his little beard and wriggling to escape. Which is all frisk? He cried. I used his distress to avoid answering the question. He's frightened. But Char wasn't distracted. Why did you listen to him, Ella? I had to answer somehow. His eyes? I lied. Something about them I had to do what he wanted. Have they found a new way to bewitch us? Char sounded alarmed. I must tell my father. The gnome child wailed, thrashing in the air. I wondered if the parrot's word might soothe him. I spoke them, hoping they weren't an insult. Fwith Chor, Ivthok, Brise, Earth, Yumadboech, Ivetwath, Brise. The child's face cleared, and he smiled, showing pearly baby teeth. He repeated. There was a dimple in the folds of wrinkles and baby fat. I put him down, and he took my hand and Char's. His parents must be worried, I said. I didn't know how to ask him where they were, and he probably was too young to answer. They weren't by the ferocious beasts or by the grazing animals. At last, we spied an ancient female gnome sitting on the ground near the pond. Her head was between her knees, an image of defeat. Other gnomes searched the reeds and hedges or questioned passers-by. Face harm, the little gnome called, pulling at Char and me. The old gnome looked up, her face wet with tears. Zolf! She grabbed him in a height in a tight hug and covered his face and beard with kisses. Then she peered at us and recognized Char. Highness, thank you for returning my grandson. Char coughed, an embarrassed sound. Uh, We're glad to bring him back, ma'am, he said. He was almost an ogre's lunch. Char, uh, Prince Char saved him, I said, and saved me too. You have the gratitude of the gnomes, the gnome bowed her head. I am Zataf. Hardly taller than I, she was much wider. Not stout, but wide, which is the directions gnomes grow after they reach adulthood. She was the most dignified personage I had ever seen, and the oldest, except for Mandy, probably. Her wrinkles had wrinkles, small folds and deeper folds of leathery skin. Her eyes were deep-set, and their copper color was clouded. I curtsied and wobbled. I'm Ella, I said. More gnomes came, and we were surrounded. How did you persuade him to come with you? Zataf asked. He would not go with most humans. Ella spoke to him, Char said, sounding proud of me. What did you say? I hesitated. It was one thing to imitate parrots for Simon or to speak to a baby. It was another to sound like a fool in front of this stately lady. Fwith shor ev talk brise earth. My boy at shiv talk brise, I said finally. No wonder he came with you, Zetaf said. Farshit! <laughs> Zolf cried joyously. He squirmed in her arms. A younger gnome woman took the child. Where did you learn gnomic? she asked. I am Zolf's mother. I explained about the parrots. What did you say to Zolf? What did I say to Zolf? It's an expression we say as a greeting, Zetaf said. In Kyrian it is, Digging is good for the wealth and good for the health. She held her hand out to me. Zolf is not the only one you will save, I see. What else could she see? Mandy had said few gnomes could tell the future. Can you see what's ahead for me? Gnomes do not see detail. What you will wear tomorrow, what you will say, are mysteries. I see outlines only. What are they? Danger. A quest. Three figures. They are close to you, but they are not your friends. She let my hand go. Beware of them. 
On her way out of the menagerie, Char said, Tonight I shall triple the guard around the ogres, and soon I shall cast, catch a centaur and give it to you. Dame Olga was punctual. She and her daughters watched while my trunk and a barrel of tonic were loaded on top of the coach. Father was there to see me off, and Mandy stood at a distance. How few things you have, Hattie told me. Dame Olga agreed. Ella is not outfitted in accordance with her station, Sir Peter. My girls have eight trunks between them. Hattie has five trunks and a half, mother, and I only have... Olive stopped speaking to count on her fingers. Uh, less. I have less. It's not fair. Father cut in smoothly. It's most kind of you to take Ella with you, Dame Olga. I only hope she won't be a bother. Oh, she won't bother me, Sir P. I'm not going. Father winced at the abbreviation. Dame Olga continued. With a coachman and two footmen, they will be safe from everything except ogres. And from ogres, I could offer a little protection. Besides, they'll have more fun without their old mother. After a pause, Father said, Not old. Never old. Madame. He turned to me. I wish you a comfortable journey, child. He kissed my cheek. I'll miss you. Liar. A footman opened the coach door. Hattie and Olive were handed in. I ran to Maddie. Mandy. I couldn't leave without a last hug. Make them all disappear, please, I whispered. Oh, Ella, sweetie, you'll be fine. She clasped, clasped me hard. Eleanor, your friends are waiting, father called. I climbed into the coach, stowing a small carpet bag in the corner, and we started to move. For comfort, I touched my chest where mother's necklace was concealed. If she were alive, I wouldn't be rolling away in, from home in the company of these creatures. I would never embrace a cook, Hattie shuddered. No, I agreed. What cook would let you? Hattie returned to an earlier subject. With so few belongings, the other girls will hardly know whether you are a, ser a servant or one of us. Why does your gown pucker in the front? Olive asked. Is that a necklace? Why wear it under your clothes? Hattie asked. Is it ugly? Olive said. Is that why you hide it? It's not ugly. Show it to us. Ollie and I want to see. An order. I brought it out. It didn't matter here. There were no thieves to steal it. Ooh, Olive said. It's n even nicer than Mama's best chain. No one would think you were a servant with that. It's very fine, although it's much too long for you. Hattie fingered the silver ropes. Olive, how milky the pearls are. Olive's fingers joined Hattie's. Let go, I shifted out of their reach. We wouldn't hurt it. May I try it on? Try it on? Mother lets me try on her necklaces, and I never hurt them. No, you can't. Oh, let me. There's a dear. An order. Do I have to? I asked. It slipped out. I could have swallowed my tongue. Hattie's eyes glittered. Yes, you have to. Give it over. Just for a minute, I said, unclasping it. I didn't delay. They mustn't see me struggle against the curse. Fasten it around my neck. I did so. Olive? The order had been for her sister. Thank you, my dear. Hattie settled back in her seat. I was born to wear jewels like this. Let me try it on, Ella, Olive said. When you're older, Hattie answered. But I had to obey. I tried desperately to ignore Olive's order, but all of my complaints started. Churning stomach, pounding temples, shortness of breath. Let her have a turn, I said, through clenched teeth. See, Olive said, Ella says I can. I know what's best for you, Olive. You and Ella are both too young. I lunged at her and unfastened the necklace before she had time to stop me. Don't give it to her, Ella, Hattie said. Return it to me. I did. Give it to me, Ella, Olive said, her voice rising. Don't be so mean, Hattie. I snatched the necklace back from Hattie and passed it to Olive. Hattie stared at me. I could see her start to work out what had happened. Mother wore that necklace at her wedding, I said, hoping to deflect her thoughts. And her mother. Are you always so obedient, Ella? Return the necklace to me. I won't let her, Olive said. Yes, you will, or I'll see that you get no dinner tonight. I took the necklace away from Olive. Hattie fastened it around her neck and patted it complacently. Ella, you should give it to me. It would be a token of our friendship. We're not friends. Yes, we are. I'm devoted to you. Olive likes you too, don't you, Olive? Olive nodded solemnly. 
I believe you will give it to me if I say you must. Do so, Ella, for friendship's sake. You must. No, I wouldn't. She couldn't have it. You can have it. The words burst from me. Thank you. What a generous friend we have, Olive. She changed the subject. The servants were careless when they cleaned the coach. This, that dust ball is a disgrace. We shouldn't have to ride in such filth. Pick it up, Ella. An order I liked. I grabbed the dust and ground it into her face. It becomes you, I said. But the satisfaction was fleeting. That is the end of chapter 7. As I always bemoan at the end of each chapter, um, YouTube will not let me make any money on anything that I do on the platform until I have a 1,000 subscribers. It would be really terrific if you subscribed. If not, um, that's all right, too. You could ignore every video I ever posted if you subscribed. It would just really help me to be compensated for um, the things that I contribute to the platform. Thanks so much um, for reading. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am enjoying reading it and um, being in this story again. Have a good one.